Now, is the idea of being a full-time YouTuber scary? It's absolutely terrifying. But what does it mean for the channel? Well, it means I have more time to create videos, so I can happily say there will now be two videos every week here on the channel. Each week there'll be a thread over on Patreon where people can suggest countries, and one of those countries will be made into a video the following Tuesday. Whoever suggested that country will be dubbed Name Explains Patron Saint of that country, and they'll get a mention in the video, and I'll even email them over a little certificate in congratulations. The video that clip was from was uploaded to name explain on the 28th of march 2018 it was to announce that i was leaving my day job and making youtube my full-time career in turn announcing i'll be making a second weekly video too that was just short of four years ago but my life and the world as a whole seems to have changed so much since then. Though one thing has pretty much stayed the same, the patron saint suggestion videos. I have been making these videos centered around locations and geographic places suggested by my patrons on pretty much a weekly basis, initially on Tuesdays and then moved to Wednesdays, and they've proven to be some of my most enjoyed and successful videos. Well, after almost four years, I'm here to say that I am retiring the patron saint suggestion videos do not fear however as something else will be taking its place all will be revealed soon enough but suffice to say i have some fun things planned for the channel in the near future though i just want to say now a huge thank you to all my name explained patron saints over the years thank you for all the wonderful video ideas that have made it onto the channel i hope your patron saint certificates are hung on your walls with pride they might be worth something in the future though probably not though anyway we have one last patron saint suggestion video to go and for the final video in this series I picked a suggestion for the country with what I believe has the most, for lack of a better term, badass name. That being the nation of Bhutan. There's a chance you may not have heard of Bhutan. It's definitely not the most well-known of countries. This small landlocked country is nestled between China and India and has the Himalaya mountains running through it. As mentioned, this country is small. With a land area of just under 40,000 kilometers square and a population of just over 750,000. This makes it one of the least populated nations in all of Asia. Bhutan is a very unique country in a lot of ways. It is the only car a negative country on the planet and has banned the use of plastic bags on multiple occasions. It also has no traffic light and the highest unclimbed mountain in the world. Though Bhutan is perhaps best known for two things in particular, its secrecy and its happiness. For many years Bhutan was a very secretive and isolated country. It was in just the 70s when outside media were allowed in to film the new king's coronation. Travelling to the country can be difficult too, while it has become easier in recent years. Bhutan seems to like to keep a certain air of mystery around itself, one that is luring more and more tourists. Though as mentioned, it is also known for its happiness. The guiding philosophy of rulemaking in the nation is centered around a concept called growth national happiness. This was a concept created by Bhutan's fourth king in 1972, and it basically means that the country should focus most on keeping its citizens happy, rather than other things like the money it generates. It's a very interesting concept to say the least and one that perhaps more countries should focus on. But what about that name of Bhutan then? Well, we aren't entirely sure as to where it came from it seems. There seems to be a few theories about the name however, which seem to be agreed upon to different degrees. The most popular idea as to where the name comes from however, is that it comes from the Sanskrit term of Bota Anta, which means end of Tibet. Tibet is of course the much debated region in Asia, also known as the roof of the world due to having the highest elevation on all of planet Earth. The nation of Bhutan lies directly to the south of the region of Tibet, hence why many believe that Bhutan's name means end of Tibet, as the region quite literally is at the end of Tibet. This etymology relates to the Tibetan name for Tibet too, Bod. The other theory is that Bhutan comes from the Sanskrit term of Bu Otan, meaning highlands, relating to the Himalayan mountains that run through the land. Whatever the case may be, the name started to take shape on European maps in the 16th century. Over the years and on different maps the name changed, going from Botan to Butan to Botan to Botantis to Botana, eventually settling on the name we know as today, Butan.
Okay, so maybe Butan isn't the most badass name. While interesting, there's nothing particularly badass about a name meaning Highland or End of Tibet, I suppose. However, Butan is only the nation's exonym, with an exonym being the name for a nation in a foreign language, like how Germany is called Deutschland in German. This is something we've explained like a million times now, but you never know when it's someone's first video. And if this is your first video, please do consider subscribing, that'll help me out amazingly, thank you. Anyway, like Germany, the nation of Bhutan has a different name in its native language of Zyongya, which by the way means language of the palace, which is pretty cool too. The country's native name is Jolokyol, which means the land of the thunder dragon. Like I said, this is a pretty badass meaning name. Dragons are cool, thunder is cool, so thunder dragons are even cooler. It reminds me of Pokemon or Game of Thrones. It even sounds like a metal band name, though maybe I'm just being too much of a nerd. How exactly did Bhutan end up with such a badass name anyway? Well, this of course relates to mythology in the land. Dragons are a staple of mythology in not just the East, but of course in the West too. Western and Eastern dragons vary, however, from appearance to what they symbolize. It seems that in Eastern cultures, dragons are heavily related to the weather. And of course, thunder is a kind of weather. Bhutan as a nation seems pretty susceptible to some rather extreme weather. Due to its location and altitude, huge thunderstorms from the mountain tops of the Himalayas often occur in the country. Average rainfall in the country comes up to 55 inches. Inches. For reference, the UK, which is seen as a pretty rainy country, has an average of 33 inches of rain a year. Thunder and rain can be scary, but it's also pretty darn impressive. In our modern world, thanks to advancement in science, we understand the origins of thunder and why this weather happened. Those in the past, however, didn't have our level of knowledge. Instead of science, they created stories to explain the unexplainable in our world. Stories like this became the myths that are so beloved today around our globe. In Bhutan's past, it was told that these fierce storms were being created by a raging dragon, and the loud thunder was none other than the dragon's mighty roar. While it might sound silly to us now, how else could you possibly explain these huge roaring sounds permeating through the sky? It had to be none other than a raging dragon. Now, forgive me for gushing a bit too much, but I genuinely believe that the creativity ancient humans used to explain the world around them is one of the greatest achievements of the human race. This raging dragon soon took on a life of its own, becoming known as Juluk. Juluk, however, is way more than just a dragon and a namesake. The beast has pretty much become the national symbol of the land. Animal symbols are no new thing for nations. Most countries have animals that represent them, official or not, such as the bulldog and lion for the United Kingdom, the bald eagle of the USA, and the emu of Australia, to name a few examples. Having a dragon as your official animal however is kind of on another level. I can't help but feel that a dragon will destroy pretty much all other national animals. Well, maybe not an emu actually, those things are deadly. And of course, Bhutan is not the only nation with a mythical national animal. The phoenix, in example, is the national bird of Lebanon. And here in the UK, the national animal of Scotland is the unicorn. And of course, here in the UK, we have whales too, whose national animal is also the dragon. However, the Druluk is way more than just a national animal too. The Druluk appears in many forms all across the land and the names within it. The title of the King of Bhutan is Druk Gyalpo, which means Dragon King, and the people of Bhutan are called Drulukpa, meaning people of the dragon. These titles for the king and his people sound almost like a mystical warrior race you would find in Dungeons and Dragons or the Elder Scrolls, though once again that might be me being a bit too nerdy. Even in more minor ways the Druk is present. Like how the National Airlines of Bhutan is called Juluk Air, and how the National Anthem's name translates to meaning the Thunder Dragon Kingdom. Though perhaps most visually noticeable, the Druk is in fact the mighty dragon that flies across their flag. It's hard to not stumble across the Druk when examining this nation and the names within it. Historically, however, the nation has actually gone by selection of other names, it seems. One of the oldest names we have for this land is Lo Mon, meaning Southern Land of Darkness, which is also pretty badass too now that I think about it. The darkness in this name does not relate to actual darkness, but rather the metaphorical darkness this land was in at the time, as Buddhism had not enlightened the nation yet. Soon, another name for the country would emerge too, being called Lo Mon Kanzi, 
This name means a land of four entry points. This relates to the extreme terrain surrounding the nation. In the past, Bhutan was so hard to access that there really were just four accessible points of entry into the nation. One in the north, one in the east, one in the south, and one in the west. Another name the land would take on would be Lo Zhong Mejon. This one means southern land of herbal medicine. This name of course relates to the variety of flora in the land, many of which is believed to have healing capabilities abilities. One final ancient name for the country is Senten Kapai Zhong. While this name might sound a tad more complex, it simply means land covered in cypress trees, because this country is indeed covered in cypress trees. All these previous names are far more conventional in regards to how we create country names, relating to the geography of the land among other things. However, none of them have really stood the test of time. So while to many outsiders this tiny nation has that unassuming name of Bhutan, to those who live within this small mysterious country, it seems it will forever be known by that badass name, meaning the land of thunder dragons. Anyway, so one last time, Bhutan was suggested by Eric Southard and thanks to their suggestion they will now be honoured as name explains patron saint of Bhutan. Thank you all so much and stay tuned. Thank you to all my patrons who support Name Explain on a monthly basis. Patron is vital to Name Explain and donating just $2 a month allows you to enjoy ad-free videos and bonus patron exclusive content. It also allows you to help choose what names get explained in upcoming videos and it gets your name here with all these awesome people. Thank you so much for all the support you guys give Name Explain. Thank you so much for reaching the end of the video. Check out another video and subscribe to stay in the loop on all things Name Explain. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram where I'm Name Explain YT and also join the Facebook group Friends of Name Explain, both of which will be linked down below. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and once again, thank you all so much.